My name is uh, Rabbi Judah Isaacs, and I am the uh, Director of Community Engagement for the Orthodox Union. And uh, we at the OU believe um, very strongly that we, as an Orthodox community, need to figure out how we can serve everybody in this room better. Um, we know that in America right now, every day, 10,000 Americans are retiring. Uh, we know that we have a very active retiree community within the Frum community. And we also know that we have an opportunity, even among those who are not yet Orthodox, who are retirees, um, that pr providing programming, providing opportunities, can be a way, I believe, as well of Kiruv. So today is the beginning of something that we're hoping to do uh, in a few places. We're hoping it to, we're doing it here in Bergen County. Our goal is to do something in South Florida uh, during probably March between Purim and Pesach. And then we hope to do the same kind of program in Woodmere. We are going to give you, um, after this program, a questionnaire that we're going to ask you to fill out because it's a very important for us to learn about what your needs are, how you think you can be served better. And we also are hoping today to introduce you, if you're not already familiar, with what's available here in Bergen County for you to continue to be active and to learn. Um, so today's program is the first in our series that uh, we are uh, proud to put on. Um, if you know of somebody who's not in this room, who you want um, to make sure that they know about this, assuming today was a good day, which we know it will be. The next program will be on, on November 4th. Uh, then we'll have one on the 18th. And then with the final program is on December 2nd. Um, it really, the person who's doing, and we tried in this program to give you uh, a Jewish learning piece and sort of a, another piece, whether that's this week on grandparent wealth management, a variety of things. Uh, the person who's giving the, the, the shear today really doesn't need any introduction. Robert Brzezinski has uh, been the rabbi here at B'nai Assurance since 1994. Um, he has a very long and distinguished career. I'm not going to read his entire resume. Um, but I will tell you that for me personally, um, one of Rabbi Przanski's books really spoke to me. And that was that Rabbi Przanski was on sabbatical. He looked at um, Sefer Shoftim and the parallels between that and current Israeli society. And uh, I want you to know I found that Sefer to be so prescient and so right on the money in terms of where we are. And if you really want to understand Israeli politics, I would recommend that book alone. Um, is, uh, Judges for Our Time, Contemporary Lessons, the Book of Shoftim, or Prophet for Today, Contemporary Lessons, the Book of Yoshua. Both of them will give you an incredible insight into where things are. So it is my esteemed pleasure to ask Rabbi Brzezinski to come and to speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Had I known, I would have brought copies to sell. Now you tell me. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. And I want to welcome all of you to the uh, inaugural luncheon of SAGE, the Seniors Actively Growing and Exploring Initiative. And I know a lot of uh, work was put into the acronym alone, not to mention the luncheon. So to me, it's a pleasure to welcome everyone. I'm honored to be the uh, first of the speakers. You can only go uphill from here, trust me. So how to live a long life. What do I know about that? I shouldn't live so long. The truth is, it's something that Chazal discuss at length, and it's not, uh, it's not what you might think. You know, people are told to uh, exercise and to uh, eat healthy foods. It's a lot more than that, and I think even in that sense, there's no real guarantee of a long life. And to a great extent, we know it's not up to us. If you look in the sources, in number two, the Gemara says in Moed Katan, Tav Chav Ches Amar Aleph, Omar Rava, Chaye, Bnei, Umezone, 
lo bizchus atalia milsa, ela bimazol atalia milsa. Chaye, longevity, children, whether one is successful or unsuccessful with children, mizone, sustenance, parnasa, income. It's not all determined by zchus, by merit, but there's mazel also. It's a separate topic. With mazel, it doesn't mean luck, but it means a flow of brachos that come from Hashem that's not completely dependent on us, on what we do. Certain things in life are, other things are not. But the question is, what do we really mean by arichas yomim? <coughs> Length of days, longevity. You know, we say every month in the Birkas HaChodesh, Vesit and in fact, it's the first of the uh, bakashas, the first of the requests we make that God should give us, Vesit and Lono, Chayim Arukim. God should give us a long life. What's a long life? We're asking actually for 30 days, 30 day increments. Because each month we have the same request, Chayim Arukim. So what then is the long life that we are requesting? And it's not a life necessarily in terms of quantity in terms of length, but it's a life in terms of quality. Quality of life, which is a phrase that's bandied about somewhat misleadingly these days, but quality of life really gives us a greater sense of longevity than mere years. And quality of life is most critical. Rabbi Yaakov Emden comments on the Gemara that we'll be discussing today in two places. Because the Gemara had a recurring question that they would ask Tanoim and Amoroim, who had reached a certain age. Yamim. How did you live such a long life? They would ask an old person, what is it that uh, enabled you to live such a long life? You know, I've seen this question asked in our day as well. Every now and then, if a person, and that's more common today than in the past, a person becomes a centenarian. They reach 100 years, and now there are thousands of people who reach the age of 100 and beyond. And they're always asked when they're interviewed by the media, how did you live such a long life? What secrets, what guidance can you offer younger people? <coughs> and they'll say, you know, I uh, smoke one cigar a day, and I have a little shot of whiskey every day. And most of the answers are in that uh, genre. Remember, there was a time when I was younger where people were allegedly living very long lives in the old Soviet Union. And they were eating yogurt. Remember those commercials? They were eating yogurt. And they lived to 110, 120, all eating yogurt. Not much of a life, but it at least enabled them to uh, live. Look at number seven. Rabbi Yaakov Emden comments on the Gemara Megillah we'll get to in a moment. How did you live such a long life? It seems that the reward that's written in the Torah does not exist in this world. So you can't even say necessarily that when the Torah promises us arichas yomim, length of days, it's in response to particular virtues that we have. We can't always make that equation. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But really that whole calculation is beyond us. It's been mazola talya milsa. We really cannot say ever that this person lived this amount of time because of this reason. That really is beyond our ken entirely. And we have in this week's Sedra, it's Parshas Chai Sara. Torah says, Avram zaken bo bayomim. Avram was old, but bo bayomim, he came with his days. And the Medrash, a beautiful Medrash that comments on Avram Avinu's length of days, that it's not simply old age as we understand the simple pshat. But old age, bobayomim, means that he came, he accounted for every day. He was productive. He had a feeling of completeness, of contentment, of satisfaction in life. So what produces that? How does a person get to live a long life that in quality gives him the blessing, or gives her the blessing to which Avram Avinu was, uh, was lionized for? At the end of his life, he died zakein v'savea yamim. Not only old, but savea yamim, satiated with his days, satisfied. That sense of satisfaction and contentment is something we all want, and not just as we enter a seasoned citizen age, but at every stage in life, we want that sense of contentment. So how do we get it? 
If you look first, uh, I guess turn the page, number 10, in the introduction to the Chovos Halovavos of Rabbeinu Bachyo, he mentioned the very end that he sees many times that Chazal, our sages, spoke of certain midos, character traits, or minhogim, or customs, practices that were accepted by them, that were embraced by them, that they feel led them further on the quest for moral perfection and gave them the quality of life that they sought. If you look at the commentary of the Rashbats on Pirkei Avos in number 13, beginning of the second parak, there the Mishnah asks, a zohi derech yishara sheyover lo ha'adam. What's the straight path that a person should endeavor to follow in life? And he says, all the Hasidim are shown him, the early pious ones, Hasidim here, lowercase ches, not uppercase ches. Hayuborim la'atzma masa tov yaser al-shar masim. They all choose for themselves one practice over another. In fact, what the Rashbats mentions here is something that we all know, sometimes intuitively, sometimes we actually live it. The Torah has taryag mitzvahs, 613 commandments. But everybody has a particular mitzvah too to which they're drawn. They have to do all of them, as best we can, as many as we can. But there's certain mitzvahs that really attract us much more than others do. One will be drawn to Talmud Torah, another to Achanasas Orchim, or to Chesed, in, the, in the, his commentary here, a person says, Tesi li de kaimis mitzvah tzitzis. I was able to receive reward, long life, because of the mitzvah tzitzis. I was very makpidin. And then he ends by saying, Uvinyan hamidos, regarding character traits, in response to the question the Gemara asks, Bameha rachti amim, how did you live such a long life? Klomar, ezo mido yofa hechzakta kolza azman. What good trait did you embrace, did you internalize, did you actualize during your life that you're able to live such a long life? And so to the Sefer Hasidim writes in Siman Reish Yud, it's in number 12, if you see a Talmud Chacham who's lived a long life, it's because he had a digduk, he had something special, something precise, some act or trait that distinguished him from others. And that's what the Gemara focuses on. Let's start first, if you turn back to the first page, start first with the Gemara, Tainistav Chof Amad Aleph, it's in number three. Gemara tells a story about Rav Adab Arava, and they digress. Ki hodi itmar, sholu tamidov, the tamidim, the disciples ask Rav Adab Arava, bameha rachta yomim. How did you live such a long life? Omar lohem, as he said to them, in all my days, I never became angry in my house. I never stepped ahead, walked ahead of someone who was greater than me. I never thought Torah thoughts in places that were unclean. But you think to yourselves, as we're going through these, what does this have to do with longevity? What does this really have to do with quality of life? But we continue. I never walked four L's without thinking of Torah, without wearing tefillin. I never slept in the house of study, either a long sleep or even a nap. How many of us can say that? I did not rejoice over the embarrassment, the humiliation of my friend. I never called a friend by a nickname that was derogatory or by his family name, by his last name, that you see sometimes people do. First name, call someone by first name, there's a sense of intimacy, of friendship. You call someone by a last name, it's more of a distance, it's considered uh, not only informal, but even a little impertinent. And to use a nickname by which someone is known as derogatory, you know, shorty, then that's, uh, well, I don't need suggestions, by the way, from the audience, but if you call somebody a derogatory nickname, then you are undermining their humanity. You're, you're undercutting their dignity. 
That's wrong. So all these things have to do with Bameha Rachta Yamim. Because he never got angry, because he didn't jump ahead of someone walking, what does it mean? If we break down each stage, each idea, each clause, we'll see a particular trait that Rav Adah Barava had, that all these traits combined, all the other Tanam Amram will discuss, all of them made for a very happy, contented life, a life of fulfillment and satisfaction. Mi lo hikpadati b'sach beisi. I never became angry in my house. That is to say, I never showed frustration. What's anger? Anger is a frustration with reality. Something happens we don't like, we can't change immediately, and we blow up. It takes the joy out of life. A person who's makbid b'soch beso especially, within his own family, within his own home, if the tenor of the home is one of fear, harshness, then that life's not a good life. No one wants to live such a life. And it's sometimes when our expectations are too high and the guidance that we're able to impart to others too minimal, we live lives of frustration. And that saps our strength and takes away our ability to enjoy life. Velo tsoanti bifne misha gadol mimeni. I never stepped in front of one who was greater than me. I wasn't always trying to get ahead. What's that? Ravata's saying, I wasn't overly competitive. I didn't chase honor. I didn't always have to be the first. You know, there are always people who want to be the first the first to the cashier, the first online, the first to the kiddush. It's stressful because if you're not the first, someone gets to dip the ladle in the chalm before you, so you didn't get the first dibs anymore. And, but that robs the joy of life also. Lotsa'aditi bifnei misha gadol many. I didn't step in front of those who are greater than me, also means that I did not let my self-esteem be dependent on others' impressions of me. That is to say, when we subjugate our feelings about ourselves by how others look at us, that's inherently debilitating. No one wants to live such a life. Yosef Atzadik, by the way, was praised because he said that, uh, the Torah says he was Yaakov said about Yosef, his descendants, v'yidgula rov v'kerev ha'aretz. They'll multiply like fish in the middle of the land. So of course, it's an oxymoron, because there are no fish in the middle of the land. The fish are in the sea. So the Gemara comments that it means that Yosef said, lo sholta bey eino bisho. The ayin hara has no effect on him. That's what it means. Fish live in an environment all their own, right? They don't care what we think about them. They care if we stick a hook in line to get them. But other than that, they live fine lives. They don't care about human beings. In our earth, everyone is dependent to some extent on other people. We on each other, the fish and, and the fowl, rather, animals. You know, we're, we're all interrelated. We eat them, but sometimes we eat each other too. Fish are a different world entirely, a different environment. We can't even live in their environment. The Yedgula Rov Viker Varetz. Yaakov said to Yosef and his descendants, be like a fish. Don't care what people think. Don't let your self-esteem be dependent on what others say about you. That's the eye in hara that we speak about sometimes, the eye of evil. If people look at you, if people look at you and you're affected by it, it means that you care what they say. Yosef said, I don't care. Los shalta bey ain't abisha. I don't care what people say. I just do what's right. To live a life which you just do what's right and not care about what others are saying, it's inherently liberating and it gives a person a good life. I let people get ahead of me. I wasn't competitive. I didn't chase honor. I wasn't dependent on success in the rat race in order to feel good about myself. Next, lo hirharti bimavos amitunafos. I didn't think Torah thoughts in unclean places. The fact is, halacha, you can't daven, you can't learn Torah in places that are unclean. But it means he was makpid. Ravada Barava was always aware of his surroundings. He always had an innate sense 
of what's appropriate and what's inappropriate given time and place. And that's a very unique dimension. I said to someone recently, someone said, yeah, the person was uh, saying uh, negative things. He made a harsh statement. So I said, you know, after 80, I give people a pass. They could say whatever they want. Yeah, they earned it, 80, 90. Sometimes older people just say whatever comes to their mind. The filters become a little weaker. Ravada Barav is saying he always knew what's right, what's wrong, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, where holy thought should be expressed, and where they shouldn't. If a person is aware of that, aware of surroundings, you always say the right thing, always do the right thing. And in the right environment, the holy environment was always treated appropriately. And moreover, Rav Adda Bar Ava was able to create an environment of holiness wherever he was. And that's also unique. Wherever we want to be, that's where we'll bring the Shechina, the Divine Presence. Wherever we are, it's appropriate for Torah. It's appropriate for Tefillin. It's, appro it's an appropriate place to serve Hashem and share His ideas and benefit His creatures because the whole earth is filled with God's glory. I never slept in the Beis HaMedrash. In objective places of holiness, like a Beis HaMedrash, like a Beis HaKnesses, he always showed the proper respect and never lost himself in his own needs. What an important trait this is. I never took pleasure in the downfall of others. It's very hard to resist that. You don't always say it, but you know, we all encounter situations in life where we see something, we hear something, and four words just reverberate, echo in our minds. I told you so, right? I told you so. You don't always say it, but you think it. And it gives a sense of gratification that, look, I knew this would happen, and it happened, and serves them right. Lo sasti pitakolas chaveri. I never rejoice in the downfall of others because that goes back to lotsanity. That only happens in a world where it's a, just an endless competition. If I'm trying to be ahead of someone or feel better about myself because of someone else. In a world of competition, it's a zero-sum game. Someone gains and I lose. Someone loses and I gain. That's not the real world. That's not the world that we want to live in. That's a very harsh, forbidding world. We shouldn't be part of that world. I didn't rejoice in the downfall of others. The flip side of that is that I resent the success of others. And that's also painful, maybe even more painful. But that's also no way to live. That cuts into our quality of life. And finally, I didn't use nicknames or family names when I spoke to other people. This is, I didn't assume an air of superiority over others by calling them by accidents of their personality and not their essence, not the intimate form of using their name or, or an appropriate title. I sought to demean them, to disparage them, and thereby elevate myself. That's a very painful existence. No one wants that. That's a very compact Gemara in tiny stuff, Chafam at Beis. But if we move to number six, it's a much longer passage in the Gemara Megillah that reiterates some of these themes. You'll see it's no great mystery what leads to a long, happy, contented life. A good quality of life is going to be similar for many people. But there are other, there are other ideas, added ideas as well. Shalu Tamidovis Rabbi Zakai. The disciples asked Rabbi Zakai, it's the Megillah, the bottom of Chavzainim at Beis, going to the top of the next stuff. Yamim. How did you live a long life? Amar lohem, miyamai lo hishtanti mayim besoch arba amos shal tefila. I never relieved myself within four amos, four L's of a person davening. What a low bar that is. We've seen that also. I never called my friend by a nickname. 
Velo bitalti kiddush hayom. I never failed to make kiddush. That's a new dimension. So the first one to stand already. Lo ishtanti ma'im besoch arva amal shal tfilo means I had respect for holy places. Lo kinisi shem lechaverai. I had respect for other people. What's kiddush hayom? Yeah, we said kiddush. A lot of people make kiddush. What's special about kiddush? So the Rishonim say, it's in the Sefi Yitzira, that God's presence, the Shekhinah, manifests itself in three different uh, situations. Acronym, Ashan, Ashan like smoke. Ayin, Shin, Nun. Olam, the world, Shana, year, and the Nun, Nefesh, in the human being. Place, time, and person. We say, Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzvakos, the three different dimensions of holiness. And those are the three, Olam, Shana, Nefesh. All three represented here. Lo hishtanti, maim b'sach arba amash al I had respect for the Shekhinah, in terms of place, in terms of makom. Lo kinisi shem l'chaveri, I expected, I, I respected my friend's dignity. He's a tzelem elokim, creating the image of God. That's in terms of Nefesh. Kiddush Hayom Shana, the Shechina, holiness in terms of time, to recognize special times, special moments, to embrace them, to internalize them. So we all know that feeling. It's a tremendous feeling. I know I look very young, but I have grandchildren also. What's more special than gathering with grandchildren, great-grandchildren on Shabbosos, on Yom Tovim, freed of the hustle and bustle of the Yemei Chol, special days, special events, with really no distractions, except maybe for Shul and the Rabbi's Drasha, but aside from that, it's just time to spend with family. That's what makes it so precious. Kiddush Hayom, L'bitalti Kiddush Hayom doesn't mean he failed to make Kiddush. Nobody forgets to make Kiddush. It means he never once negated the sanctity of a day that can enrich his life, like a Shabbos. Every Shabbos was a Shabbos. Every Yom Tov was a Yom Tov. The special events, the Seder, the Sukkah, Rosh Hashanah, the events that we usually try to gather with our family, that enriches our lives in a way that we recognize, that we should recognize, and we all know, I certainly think back in my own life, recognize this, children growing up, the younger generation, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, they recognize it as well. They may not appreciate it when they're six or 10 years old, but when they're 30, 40 years old, when they're 50, 60 years old, in the same position, then they think back to their grandparents and their great-grandparents and the effect, the meaning, the, the, the layers of uh, substance that the presence of these individuals added to their upbringing and to the celebration of an understanding of those holy days, Shabbos Hoseyam Tovim, when there's a special Kiddush. That's Reb Zakkai. Next, the third line. The Talmidim asked Reb Eloza ben Shamua, Bameh Rachta Yomim, How did you live a long life? Amar lohem miyamai lo asisi kapendar yelaveis I never made the shul into a shortcut. I never trampled on the heads of the holy people. I never duchened without saying a bracha first. Again, variations on the same thing, theme and a little new as well. I never made the shul into a kapandaria. You know what that means, a shortcut? I'd right, say, so here's a building, it's a little different. But the truth is, if you want to get from West Englewood to Jefferson, you should walk outside on the sidewalk. Shouldn't take the diagonal to the shul, through the shul, even though you're not really using the shul but the rest of the building. The building itself has a certain kedusha to it. But certainly if a person wants to walk through, like if, let's say you come in, if you want to go out, the, uh, here's a good example, you wanna, you're upstairs in the lobby and you want to go out to the West Englewood side, you shouldn't walk through the old main shul. Make the shul into a shortcut. You should go around in order to get out. That's also a respect for Kedusha, respect for a holy place. It's, not, it's a Gemara, it's Allah, you can't do that. But he emphasized that. Again, he was always mindful of holy places, that the world is not all the same. 
The world has places where holiness is extant and felt, and the world has places where it's less felt. In the places of objective holiness, you can't treat them like you would the uh, shopping mall. Velo pasati al am kadosh. I didn't walk on people's heads. What's the uh, symbolism? In context, the Rebbe's walking in, and the room is filled, and then, you know, everyone's sitting on the floor, and to get from the back to the front, you climb over people. I've even seen sometimes, uh, they'll, in certain congested uh, areas, they'll lift the Rebbe on their shoulders and carry him in. Another way to do that is to walk over people, right? Sometimes you see kids do that, teenagers do that. They'll just walk over people to get to where they want to go. No, I never stepped on people to get ahead. I never used other human beings as stepping stones for myself, as just rungs on the ladder so I can get to the top. You know the old saying that the people you step on on the way up, the people who have to catch you on the way down. Lo posati al rashe am kadosh. I never stepped on the heads of Klal Yisrael, holy people. Ram says that even if they are hediotos who shvalim, they present sometimes as lowly people, you should remember B'nai Avram Yitzhak the Yaakov Hain, the children of the patriarchs, the children of the matriarchs, Tzivos Hashem, they're God's legions, whom he took out of Egypt, Bechach Gadol V'yod Chazakah, they're a pres- precious nation. Never forget that. Never walk on other people to get ahead. A person who only sees others, other people, as a vehicle for his self-aggrandizement, that's also a very unhappy life. And finally he said, Lo nasati kapai below bracha. I never duchened without saying a bracha first. Oh, we have some kohanim here, Edza Kohen, Mr. Bardish, Kohen as well. Oh, the kohanim sit together, I like that. All right, tribal unity has to exist in our words. Levium, we stand alone. What does it mean he never duch on a bracha? He's supposed to make a bracha. What's the bracha? V'tzivanu levarech es amo Yisrael v'ahava. He never failed to say the birchas kodim without feeling love for his subjects. All right? Do kodim always feel love? These two, yes. All kodim? I don't know. But for sure they're supposed to feel it. He never Bless the Jewish people. Never served as the conduit for God's blessing without feeling an intense love for the Jews. He never wavered in his love of Jews. A person who's filled with Avas Yisrael also lives a happy life. Why? Because too many people love Jews, but they love the Jews who are like them, you know, exactly like them. And if they deviate even slightly, well, it's not really part of my circle anymore. To love all Jews is to see the good parts of all Jews, to see the contribution that they make, to see sometimes even their good motivations if their conduct falls short. To be an O of Yisrael is inherently a much happier life and engenders a greater quality of life than to be one whose Avas Yisrael is contingent, contingent on people acting the way I think they should act. Next, Rav Predo. The fourth line. The Talmud of Esraf Predo, Ba Meherach the Yomim, Miyomai lo Kidumani Adam lo Vesa Midrash. No one ever came before me to the Vesa Medrash. Velo Berach the Lufne Kohen. He never said the Birchas Hamazon. Oh, we shouldn't forget the bench, by the way. Never said the Birchas Hamazon before if there was a Kohen present. Velo Achalti me Behemosh lo Hurmu Matno Seha. I never ate from an animal from whom the matnos kahuna, the priestly gifts, were not yet taken. Even though, by the way, that's mutter. He didn't do that. What do all of these have in common? Zrizos, assiduousness and patience. Two traits that seem to conflict, but really work together. To be patient, and at the same time to be a zoriz, to be active, to be energetic. Lo kidmani adam lebeisa medrash. No one ever came before me to the base of Medrash. Meaning, in the place of holiness, in the place of service of Hashem, in the place of Talmud Torah, I wasn't lazy. I wanted to be there. When it's something important, I want to be amongst the uh, people who come first. There's a fellow who's uh, habitually late. 
to davening. He won't listen to the tape, I hope. So you walk in like 15, 20 minutes late, usually after Baruch Hu, and so the end of davening, he says a Baruch Hu out loud. All right, the last thing, which is not so much an invitation to others to answer Baruch Hashem Hamburach Olam Ve'ed, as much as it is a proclamation, I was late, I was late, take notice of me, I was late. So I said to him this morning that, uh, you know, Mondays and Thursdays, you don't have to say Baruch because we say Baruch during the Elios. We read the Torah. That's even Minyanim where they say Baruch at the end, they don't say Baruch so they don't say Baruch at the end of the opening on days of Kriyas Torah. She said, oh, I didn't know that. I said, it also helped to come on time, that you wouldn't be in that situation to begin with. No one ever came before me because I wanted to be there. It's a place of holiness. I recognize, despite the fact that Talmud Chacham has precedence in terms of leading the benching, he let the Kohen come first. He zoris to get to the base of Medrash, but to take honor, to accept an honor, let someone else have it. He doesn't have to seek honor. And the third, I didn't eat from an animal from which the matnos kahuna were not taken. It means he was never in a rush to get to this particular food. Let someone else have it. I'll wait. Even the halacha doesn't require it. The matnos is going to come after too. Nonetheless, I'll wait for another animal to come along. So notice his priorities. To get to the base HaMedrash, he wants to be the first. Kavod doesn't have to be the first. Physical gratification does not have to be the first. For that he could wait. Reb Nuchunya ben Akona, continuing, about ten lines down now. Wow, how many times has this recurred? He said as well, I never glorified, I never took pleasure in the humiliation of my friend. I think it's the third time. Also, I never went to bed with myself cursing my friend, someone who had harmed me. And I was uh, liberal in spending my money. I wasn't a, uh, a, a tightwad, all right? It wasn't miserly. All right, so the first we understand, respect for others. Personal respect for others, again, it leads to a tremendous quality of life. But next, lo also mitasi klas I never went to bed angry at someone. That's what it means. People say this, you know, long marriages, they'll say, yeah, it's one of their milos, one of the virtues. Never went to bed angry. I was made up before. Not everyone is zochet to that, but there is something that people are zochet to, that if someone wronged you during the day, in fact, he continues, ki hadamar zutra, ki havasolik lepurya, Whenever he went to bed, he would say, I forgive anyone who aggravated me today. Anyone who wronged me, I forgive. Eh, it doesn't mean I won't sue them tomorrow, but that's a different issue. I forgive them. I hold no grudges against them. One who can go to sleep without holding a grudge against someone from the day is in a very, very happy place. And it's not as impossible as it sounds because most of the aggravations that come our way from others are really petty, inherently petty, and should not affect at all the way we live, the way we feel, the way we interact. It's just really not that important. I remember years ago, the Chavetz Chaim Foundation gave out a little card I had next to my phone for years, next to one phone. It says on it, Zelo Chashuv. <laughs> it's not important. Because a lot of aggravation these days comes through the telephone. Yeah, through texting also, but telephone. Most of what people are uh, exercised about in the world, certainly in their personal relations, is really in the scheme of things, it's really not that important. And if you could just put that aside, put it in the file, and file that on the, in the shelf, it could be quite uh, heavy over the years, but nonetheless, that person's life's a good life, because who really cares? That's what... Uh, Rav Nuchunya Hagbenakona said, thirdly, Vatran Bimomani Hayisi. He spent freely. He was not grudging. He didn't count every penny, every nickel, right? I don't want to intrude on anyone's lives here, but if you go out to dinner with uh, other people, friends, 
I rarely do, by the way, I just admit it, just no time. But if you do, so there are different types of uh, typologies. One will bring out a calculator, go through the bill, and uh, assign every last item, including the free water, to a person uh, at the table so that the breakdown is precise in terms of dollars and cents. And others will estimate. And they'll say, or they'll say, I'll pick up this check. You'll get the next one. We'll go to a more fancy restaurant. I'll get this. You get the next one. We'll alternate. And that's Vatram Bimamoni, who I saw. He was a Vatron. He didn't really care. He didn't have to count every nickel. Who was like this, by the way? The Gemara says, interestingly, Eov, Eov, for all its sorrows, Job. He was a Vatron Bimamone. Shemeniach prutelechen vani mimone. He go to a store, he'd buy something. Eov was the first person who ever said, keep the change. We throw in a tip. It's not important. Lo chashuv. To be a Vatron means you're not uh, anxious over every dollar, every nickel. You're not counting everything. You're free to enjoy what you have without worrying about how much it's going to cost. That's from Nechum and Akone. Reb Nechum and Akone was asked by Rabbi Akiva, by Meherach to Yomim. So the Gemara says, Asu gavzi ve'kamachule. Reb Nechum and Akone's uh, aides became angry at Rabbi Akiva, and they started to hit him. How dare you ask how he lived a long life? As if you begrudge him to live a long life. So Mark continues, Rabbi Akiva climbed to the top of a date palm tree to escape the wrath of Rabbi Nechumya's uh, uh, students. And from there he asked the question of Rabbi Nechumya, How did you live a long life? I never accepted gifts. I never insisted on every right. And thirdly, he too was Vatra Bimimono. He also was free spending. Let's look at the first two a little different. Miyamai lo kibalti matanos, and never accepted gifts. Like Mark explains that uh, based on the Pasuk and Mishle, sone matanos yichia, the person who hates gifts shall live. What's wrong with gifts? Nothing. Gifts are great, except when they produce a sense of entitlement, that I'm expecting it, all right? And if I don't get it, therefore, I'm disappointed. Lo kibalti matanos, I didn't accept gifts, meaning I never had the expectation that something I don't deserve would come my way. I didn't expect anything. I didn't expect anything, so therefore I was able to enjoy every action, and I didn't look for something else, you know? I think every grandparent has that feeling. When you visit the grandchildren, they expect something, right? You come empty-handed, so we're happy, they're less happy, you know, turn away. It's a, not a good trait. So they say, yeah, right, we, are, we are relatively uh, open with our grandchildren. We love to give, but loving to give should never, never uh, eventuate into the expectation that something will be given such that to come empty-handed is uh, unwelcome, all right? I used to have a sign in my law office, so a little picture of the Kotel, and it said on it, V'lo yeru fanai rekom, you shall not come empty-handed, which was a message to my clients, nothing to do with, uh, you know, <laughs> gifts. But nonetheless, a person who has an expect expectation of matanos, so that person not living a happy life. And by the way, the Gemara says, and this is a, a major problem in society today, I'm writing a book about it now, in fact, the uh, entitlement society is based on the notion that others have to give to me. And if they don't, there's something wrong with them. And I'm entitled to feel aggrieved. We don't have such a concept in Jewish life. I have no expectation of that. I'm not entitled to anything. If you give it, b'simcha, I'll accept it if I want to. But it does not carry with it any burden that I should hope, expect from you to do something that's really not, that, uh, not, uh, not uh, imperative. And next, lo maratel midosai. This is a very, very important one, really critical, and again, a little different than we've had before. And it, it aids a person into, in living such a joyful life, not insisting on every right. You know, 
There's nothing better in life than to be right, and nothing more painful than to be right and having always to uh, force it on people, to coerce their acceptance of your rectitude upon them. You have to make every claim, all right? You know, not every claim has to be as even when you're right. Not every claim has to be asserted. Not every legal grievance has to be redressed. And not every personal slight has to be avenged. A person's mavra almidosov, the Gemara says, call a mavra almidosov, ma'avir mimenu kolpshov, a person who overlooks slights, who waives their just claims, so God overlooks their iniquities too, right? If we overlook what harmful things people do to us, so God overlooks the sins that we do. God's also mavrel as midos. That is a, a desirable trait. You know, what's the saying? It's better to be kind than to be right. It's not enough to be right. You have to be kind too. And a person who emphasizes kindness over rightness lives a much better life. And finally, Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha. Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha says at the bottom, he was asked, Rebbe himself asked Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha, he was Rabbi Kiva's son, Rabbi Yeshua. Ba yomim, so he answered, Mi lo bidmus adam rasha. In all my days, I never gazed upon the countenance of a wicked person. What does it mean? The world has a lot of rishos in it. There's no question about it. And we have to fight the rishos as well. We never want to, of course, humanize the rishos by looking at their faces, because then we begin to see human dimensions and it seems so bad, you know? You, uh, what's going on today? You have a new set of uh, Iranian diplomats. They wear nice suits, some of them wear ties, and so they, uh, the world is now happy. Yeah, they're, they're talking. You can't look at a Russia like that. You can't stare at his countenance and try to find uh, dimensions of compassion and humanity in it, but something else as well. You can't obsess on evil either. It makes for a stressful existence that's debilitating. And stress, we all know, is the great killer. Physically, for sure, but in terms of quality of life. If a person would sit and just contemplate day after day the evil in the world, in all circles, in every continent, and even the evil that affects Kla Yisrael, if all you do is wallow in it, then there's no richas yom in that. There's no quality of life, there's no quantity of life. It's not a very pleasant life at all. We have to deal with it. We have to combat it. We have to better look for all the good and try to enhance the good in the world. Because if all we do is see evil, in fact, all we do is fight evil, it's also debilitating. Rabbi Yishu ben Karcha said, and what's Rabbi Yishu ben Karcha, Rabbi Akiva's son, he did no evil in his life. His father, who was martyred in such a gruesome way by the Romans, didn't know evil. They did no evil. But lo histakalti bidmus odam rasha. He didn't stare. Didn't become obsessed over it. Didn't think that there's all the only thing that there is in life is evil, and it's weighing us down. And we have to try to overcome it. That can't be. A person has to see good. Sur mera vaseto. Evil exists. Fight it, but turn away from it and see the good, the blessings with which Hashem has bestowed us. That makes for a much pleasant life. All these things together are really summarized in number five, in the Michtav Melio, in the fifth chilek. He says, The Gemara brings a number of different examples how the Chachamim merited such long life, but again, not in terms of days and years, long life in terms of their quality of life. Some of them just reflected kindness and interpersonal affairs. I didn't uh, gloat in someone's downfall. I wasn't uh, miserly. Some of them related to akaras godel arachim ruchaniim bepnim alev. Some represented the recognition of the greatness of spiritual values internally, in terms of appreciation for holiness, our relationship to God. Some of them related to kavod shomayim. Didn't make the shul into kapandaria. Some related to our emuna as well, our faith in God. 
all together, last line, v'chulam in yanei digduk b'mitzvos, u'shmiras arachim b'chus gvoha, all of these, in terms of the way we observe the mitzvos, and the preservation of our values on the highest level, v'godol ho'echus d'areshes kamus rabba v'chlibi tuyav, and the greatness of the quality demands quantity as well through his, uh, the, the vehicle of expression. Chazal knew how to teach us how to live, how to make our lives into ones that are fulfilling. Like I started by mentioning Avram Avinu, Zakein Yomim, to have our day satiated, full of activity, full of depth and substance, surrounded by our loved ones, able to influence them, able to enjoy our lives, able to relate to other people in a very healthy way. That represents Arichus Yomim as the Torah saw it. I want to thank you all for coming. And by in way of conclusion, I want to thank the OU for starting this particular program, the SAGE Initiative. The OU does so many things for so many different uh, periods in our lives, you know, for kids and special needs and adults and kashras. We all eat because of the OU. To have them take now a special interest into the older citizens of Kal Yisrael, that's very much a part of their desire to uh, service the needs of all Jews. And I thank them, and I thank you all for your rapt attention. Enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, enabled you to live such a long life. You know, I've seen this question asked in our day as well. Every now and then, if a person, and that's more common today than in the past, a person becomes a centenarian. They reach 100 years. And now there are thousands of people who reach the age of 100 and beyond. And they're always asked when they're interviewed by the media, how'd you live such a long life? What secrets, what guidance can you offer younger people? <coughs> and they'll say, you know, I uh, smoke one cigar a day and I have a little shot of whiskey every day. And most of the answers are in that uh, genre. Remember there was a time when I was younger where people were allegedly living very long lives in the old Soviet Union. And they were eating yogurt. Remember those commercials? They were eating yogurt. And they lived to 110, 120, all eating yogurt. Not much of a life, but it at least enabled them to uh, live. Look at number seven. Rabbi Yaakov Emden comments on the Gemara Megillah we'll get to in a moment. How did you live such a long life? It seems that the reward that's written in the Torah does not exist in this world. So you can't even say necessarily that when the Torah promises us arichus yomim, length of days, it's in response to particular virtues that we have. We can't always make that equation. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But really, that whole calculation is beyond us. It's been mazola talya milsa. We really cannot say ever that this person lived this amount of time because of this reason. That really is beyond our ken entirely. And we sustenance, parnasa, income. It's not all determined by zchus, by merit, but there's mazel also. It's a separate topic. What mazel doesn't mean luck but it means a flow of brachos that come from Hashem that's not completely dependent on us, on what we do. Certain things in life are, other things are not. But the question is, what do we really mean by arichus yomim? <coughs> Length of days, longevity. You know we say every month in the Birkas HaChodesh, Vesiten Lano, in fact it's the first of the uh, bakashas, the first of the requests we make that God should give us Vesiten Lano, Chayim Arukim. God should give us a long life. What's a long life? We're asking actually for 30 days, 30 day increments. Because each month we have the same request, Chaim Arukim. So what then is the long life that we are requesting? And it's not a life necessarily in terms of quantity, in terms of length, but it's a life in terms of quality. Quality of life, which is a phrase that's bandied about somewhat misleadingly these days, but quality of life really gives us a greater sense of longevity than mere years. And quality of life is most critical. Rabbi Yaakov Emden comments on the Gemara that we'll be discussing today in two places. Because the Gemara had a recurring question that they would ask Tanoim and Amoroim, 
who had reached a certain age. How did you live such a long life? You would ask an old person, what is it that... Uh... My name is uh, Rabbi Judah Isaacs, and I am the uh, Director of Community Engagement for the Orthodox Union. And uh, we at the OU believe um, very strongly that we, as an Orthodox community, need to figure out how we can serve everybody in this room better. Um, we know that in America right now, every day, 10,000 Americans are retiring. Uh, we know that we have a very active retiree community within the Frum community. And we also know that we have an opportunity, even among those who are not yet Orthodox, who are retirees, um, that pr providing programming, providing opportunities, can be a way, I believe, as well of Kiruv. So today is the beginning of something that we're hoping to do uh, in a few places. We're hoping it to, we're doing it here in Bergen County. Our goal is to do something in South Florida uh, during probably March, between Purim and Pesach, and then we hope to do the same kind of program in Woodmere. We are going to give you, um, after this program, a questionnaire that we're going to ask you to fill out because it's very important for us to learn about what your needs are, how you think you can be served better, and we also are hoping today to introduce you, if you're not already familiar, with what's available here in Bergen County for you to continue to be active and to learn. Um, so today's program is the first in our series that uh, we are uh, proud to put on. Um, if you know of somebody who's not in this room, who you want um, to make sure that they know about this, assuming today was a good day, which we know it will be, the next program will be on, on November 4th, uh, then we'll have one on the 18th, and then we'll, the final program is on December 2nd. Um, it really, the person who's doing, and we tried in this program to give you uh, a Jewish learning piece and sort of a, another piece, whether that's this week on grandparent wealth management, a variety of things. Uh, the person who's giving the, the, the shear today really doesn't need any introduction. Robert Brzezinski has uh, been the rabbi here at B'nai Assurance since 1994. Um, he has a very long and distinguished career. I'm not going to read his entire resume. Um, but I will tell you that for me personally, um, one of Rabbi Przanski's books really spoke to me, and that was that Rabbi Przanski was on sabbatical. He looked at um, Sefer Shoftim and the parallels between that and current Israeli society. And uh, I want you to know I found that Sefer to be so prescient and so right on the money in terms of where we are. And if you really want to understand Israeli politics, I would recommend that book alone. Um, is, uh, Judges for Our Time, Contemporary Lessons, the Book of Shoftim, or Prophet for Today, Contemporary Lessons, the Book of Yoshua. Both of them will give you an incredible insight into where things are. So it is my esteemed pleasure to ask Rabbi Brzezinski to come and to speak with us today. Thank you very much. Had I known, I would have brought copies to sell. Now you tell me. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. And I want to welcome all of you to the uh, inaugural luncheon of SAGE, the Seniors Actively Growing and Exploring Initiative. And I know a lot of uh, work was put into the acronym alone not to mention the luncheon. So to me, it's a pleasure to welcome everyone. I'm honored to be the uh, first of the speakers. You can only go uphill from here, trust me. So how to live a long life. What do I know about that? I shouldn't live so long. The truth is, it's something that Chazal discuss at length. And it's not, uh, it's not what you might think. You know, people are told to uh, exercise and to uh, eat healthy foods. It's a lot more than that. And I think even in that sense, there's no real guarantee of a long life. 
And to a great extent, we know it's not up to us. If you look in the sources, in number two, the Gemara says in Moed Katan, Dav Chav Ches Amar Aleph, Amar Rava, Chaye Bnei Umezone, Lo Bizchus Atalia Milsa, Ela Bimazol Atalia Milsa. Chaye, longevity, children, whether one is successful or unsuccessful with children, Mizone, 